Hello racing fans and a warm welcome to our Gallup TV preview show for Friday and hear this it's the 2nd of February can you believe it uh, we're already uh, a month into New Year 2024 and uh, we race in Kabeja on the turf track at Fairview and I trust you the valued racing fan is well looking forward to a new month eight races carded at Fairview race number one which will kick off the exotics is at 12 40 20 to 1 it will be the start of the bar pot and as always it's our analyst uh, the man that keeps up in the loop with everything that uh, we need to know about racing from Fairview is none other than Grant Paddock and Grant I just want to uh, find out uh, how's uh, the first month of January doing and I trust that you well yeah morning these morning punters yeah it's not too bad not too bad um one month down and a few more to go but uh weather's very good hot as hell down here i must be honest with you so we'll have a good day's racing on the grass tomorrow no doubt the track will be running very very quick so those front runners are probably going to have a slight advantage and uh, you want to be drawn low numbers down the straight i think there's been a bit of a bias at the fairview track down the straight lately and um i think the low numbers are definitely slightly better in the sprint races yeah, I think that is uh, some uh, good observation with regards to the sprint trip. So keep an eye on those low number draws. Race number one, Grant, will kick off the bar pot at 12.40. Uh, it's over 1,000 meters. It's a maiden plate for fillies and mares. Let's bring up the field as always, horses in single figures. Uh, number one is at 2-1. to one. Number two at 22-10. to 10. Number three at six to one. Horse number five is at eight to one. And then it is uh, double figures, the balance. There are a lot of first timers in the race, Grant. Nothing that has attracted any anti post betting support. But how do you see the first leg of the bipod? Um, these. Um, I did have a chat to the yard regarding the, the one or shine in Memphis. Yeah, decent kind of a Johannesburg form. I see it's at two to one. They are under the impression that the horse is going to need its first run in Port Elizabeth. But saying that, then best intention should should win this race. Got the solid uh, maiden form. Um, probably found the right race then. I can give you a bit of value in the six. What now, my guy? Put up a very good grass gallop the other day, and that's definitely going to be in the finish, there's no doubt. I've gone just two and six in the bipod, and I think the two should win it. These um, not a not a really difficult race. Horses like Nairobi should be placed, as well as Gotcha Buzz having its third run here. So um, not, a, not a bad race, but best intention should win it. Well, you've picked up some nice value. I just had a look at the price of your horse there, number six. What now, my gal? That's trading at 12 to 1. That could be a nice play for you and your swingers and exactors. But Grant thinking that horse number two, best intention at 22 to 10 ahead of Shine in Memphis, which is priced up at 2 to 1, could be the right horse here in leg one of that bipod. Then on to the place to accumulate a ground. That will begin at 13, 15, a quarter past one. Another maiden plate. Uh, this is for fillies and mares over 1,400 meters. And uh, let's get into the betting. Number one is at 22 to 10 with uh, young Lehaba claiming the two and a half. Number two, Venetian Moonlight is at five to one. Number three, Sea of Tears, is at even money, Grant. And then we got double figures, the balance. Is uh, the even money spot on on the source, or you expected uh, her to be shorter or, you know, bigger in the betting? Um, DC, I think it's spot on. It opened 14 to 10. There was money into even money. I made it the best bet on the card. This horse has been very unlucky. It's last two starts. Been given very, two very, very ordinary runs, especially the last time. Uh, in, uh, ordinary ride, sorry. Um, Kitty Mo, definitely the danger. I think that is the exact of the day, the three from one, but you're not going to get rich. Uh, the Michelin yard hold a very strong hand here. Yeah. I think Sea of Tears will win well and uh, definitely a banker. Bipod banker as well as place accumulator banker. I've gone Sea of Tears to beat Kitty Mo, and then the two Venetian Moonlight and the four Montreal. But um, good thing Sea of Tears. Well, there's some confidence coming through from Grant, and that's what we like when he gives us the green light and he's given it to us in a big way up yeah, with horse number three, Sea of Tears. Possibly races one and two, 22 to 10, even money. That could be a nice way to start off your day, races one and two. And then we'll bank some cash and we'll use some to invest in the pick six. That will start in race number three. It's at 1350, 10 to 2, 1400 meters uh, the distance. This is an open maiden and this is how they're betting. Horse number three is at 9 to 2. 
Number five is at four to one. Number six is at four to one. Horse number seven at eight to one. Uh, horse number eight is at 22 to 10. And then it is double figures, the balance. There's uh, a few things that we can chat about here, Grant. Uh, firstly, number two uh, will be having uh, his first run for Gavin Smith, uh, formerly with the Ricky Maingard yard down in Cape Town. Uh, this young kid, Lee Harbour, well, he's really taken to riding at uh, Fairview and he gets the chance claiming on a horse number five. And then number eight, Williams Legacy. What did you make of that first start um, uh, for Kelly? Um, this, this is the one. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, don't, didn't think he get the, got the best help from the saddle. Um, hopefully, the boy has a, rides a better race. Uh, um, I think he'll win this race and win it well. With regards to number five, MoFlo, the kid is riding extremely well down here. 1,400, probably a furlong too short. Um, he'll be running on strongly. US opens another horse from a good draw, doesn't know how to run a bad race. And then, obviously, the three-horse run for me with a cape form. You know, two links, three links off in Cape Town to normally come out and win first time out here. And Gavin Smith does like to get them ready. Watch for uh, money on the three horse. I make Williams' legacy a good thing. My pick six, I've only gone three and eight. Wow, that is a big saving for us, Grant. Three and eight, two horses. Of course, he's going with the unknown, including the horse. May just come out and win first up for Gavin Smith. So, including the eight as a cover to a horse that he sounds very confident with, number eight, Williams Legacy. Well, can this be the play? 22 to 10, race one. Even money, race number two. 28 to 10, race number three. If that has to arrive, Grant, whenever you in KZN, the bunny is on me. Okay, race number four. We'll start off the jackpot. It will be jackpot one, 1425. It's over 1400 meters. Betting here, number one, 22 to 10. Number three, uh, two is at three to one. Three at nine to two. Four at eight to one. Five is at six to one. And it's double figures, the balance. Very interesting uh, horse here, Pinnacle. I say this, Grant, because, you know, beside this young kid who seems to have struck up a, a good partnership with this filly, the handicapper got hold of her last time out, 87 to a 95. You don't often see, you know, that a big hit in Fairview with horses, Grant. That was a, a big penalty. Yeah, big penalty. Unfortunately, you do see it. We do see it too often. Um, these, she won a very good race. Um, she's got the kid on again, taking the weight off. Once again, I think she's found the right field and the way the way she runs the races, she she kills them with early speed and, and she seems to find all the way to the line. Track and trip suits her to the ground, got the draw, doesn't have to use herself up to be in front. And um, her dangers seem to like her to touch further. Definitely maybe the favourite is, um, you know, she's definitely better over further, mile 1800. 1400 on grass is going to be difficult for her to make up that kind of ground on pinnacle, there's no doubt. I'm not really concerned about the, that penalty. These, um, I just think the field is right for her and, and the conditions as well. I think her biggest danger could be Rose of Bayou. Um, the pick six, you only need those two, those three horses, one, two, and three. But I've gone from pinnacle to beat Rose of Bayou and definitely maybe Deza. I think this filly, you know, uh, uh, she's going to be followed until beaten. Followed until beaten, uh, horse uh, number two of uh, Pinnacle. So uh, we'll see what happens here, even though she's got that penalty race number four. Uh, some numbers that Grant has given you there. So we'll see what happens in the suggested bet that he's given, which will come up at the end of the show. Race number five will be jackpot two over 1,000 meters. Uh, this is a handicap for fillies and mares. It's a D division class. Uh, betting here, Grant, number two is at five to two. A uh, horse number three is at 11 to two, six at eight to one. We got horse number nine at eight to one, and it is double figures the balance. Well, what I've written in my book here, Grant, in big bold letters is H-E-L-P. So that spells help, Grant Paddock. <laughs> be studying a little bit harder. Listen, it's a, it's, it's a tricky fillies and mares race, there's no doubt. But this filly, um, Esther, last time out she ran in a pinnacle plate. She's down to a merit rate at 78. She got beaten a short head by Golden Pacific, who's in the hundreds. She, she's down running in a 78. If she just runs the same race, she should win. But there are negatives. She's now carrying 61 kilos and, and she is now drawn on 13, which to me is on the wrong side of the course. If you're not going to bank her, 
Esther, you're going to need to have a lot of horses to go in with her. Um, I've decided uh, to go wide in this race, Dees. All of 2, 3, 4, 7, 10, and 13. Very, very tricky if you're going past a horse like Esther. Horses like Ella's Delight with the weight off her back shows a lot of pace. So too, Cold Truth, a very nice filly that can improve, but unfortunately drawn on the wrong side of the course. And um, then you have the likes of Angel C, who doesn't know how to run a bad race, but also, once again, drawn on the wrong side of the course. Um, tricky if you're looking past Esther Dees, but um, I still think she should pull this off. Well, if you're looking for a roving banker, sounds like Esther could be the right horse for that roving banker here in race number five. But when you look at trifectas and quartets, this is the one that you want to catch. I think whatever, regardless of the results that I save, you will get a decent dividend here uh, in race number five. But take note of what Grant says, and we'll keep an eye on those barrier positions, especially down the straight, where Grant is of the opinion that those high number draws are certainly not favoring your chances. You do have uh, what he's saying is a bias to those low number draws down the straight, but we'll keep an eye on that on the first few races, and maybe we can see if things have changed for Friday. Race number six is over 1,000 meters, a merit rated 80 handicap. And this is how they're betting here. Number one, Rose for Trippy, 28 to 10. Uh, number two is European Summer at 9 to 2. Number three, Cool Winter is at 5 to 1. Horse number four, Vision of Wonder at 7 to 2. Five, uh, six, Tuscan Gold is at 8 to 1. And uh, then it is horse number seven, RC, at 8 to 1. And this horse, Putin's Promise, who is not in single figures in the betting, uh, does grab my attention for Montana Turner and Dennis Schwartz because the last two runs have been good efforts. Does that form part of your play? Because I like the look of Putin's Promise here, uh, Grant. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely with a nice low weight on it on as well. 57, not a low weight, a, a decent weight on its back. Holding solid form is definitely in my place. One of my forces in the big six. Once again, uh, uh, tricky races for me. You know, this was Rose of Trippy. She was in that same Esther form line in a pinnacle plate. She's now down to a uh, merit rate at 80, but it is against the boys. She has got the claim on, which is going to be a big benefit. The, the stable thinks it's gonna, she's going to run a very big race. I'm a bit concerned having its second run here. I've gone with a bit of cover in the likes of Vision Wonder, Vision of Wonder, who's backed down into sprinting trips, and he was really quick as a two-year-old and an early three-year-old. So being back in trip, that could help being freshened up. And then um, Tuscan Gold, he got caught wide on the poly last time out and ran no kind of a race. I think he should improve as well as Putin's promise. I went those four horses, tricky kind of one with a small preference to Rose of Trippy, but nothing strong. Pick six, one, four, six, and nine. Well, dare we leave out Khrif and Furi? Imagine if that has to arrive in me. We don't uh, include the inform combination. In, what's your thoughts on that uh, with number three, Cool Winter? Very in and out, these. Um, you can't trust that horse. He runs very in and out, 61 and a half. Um, he seems to have a better form on the poly, so I'm going to uh, look past him. Taking a chance there and leaving out number three, just reducing the cost of the perm. As you reduce the numbers per leg, well, the spend uh, reduces as well. And hopefully it works out accordingly for Grand Paddock's numbers there, which are numbers one, four, and nine uh, in race number six. Race number seven, 1900 meters. This is a classified stakes. Number two at 11 to two. And then we've got horse number seven, uh, which is possibly the horse that will set the standards here at five to two. Nine Ellis Island uh, is trading at four to one. And I know that this horse has been kind to Garth in the past, uh, to Grant in the past, and a few times he's went for it at value, etc. Number 10 at six to one. There is a scratching here, Grant. Number 11 is a late scratching, and that was trading at around five to one. So whilst I read out the betting, there will be adjustments after the scratching of horse number 11. Uh, this filly against the boys, uh, you know, there are, there are a few fillies in the race, but she's one of them, uh, a St. Cloud. Uh, see, the other filly is horse number 10, which is Lady right here. They are the two fillies in the race, uh, along with number six, Rosa Rossa. So there are three fillies in the race. But uh, first things, uh, you know, will she be able to match strides uh, with the boys here? Because I see three starts back. She did race in open company. 
and um, you know she was fancied as well behind then in focus but against this type of field how what you make of her chances uh, very very big runner you know classified stakes the fillies get their two and a half kg sex allowance she's very well in won an absolutely brilliant race last time out on the poly came from nowhere long straight on the grass is going to suit her right down to the ground richard for i thought she was one of the better bets on the day so includes she does tends to get left and comes with a uh, a late run, it's not a problem with that 800 meter a long straight. Massive, massive runner. I think she she should win this race and win it well. Dangerous Ellis Island, Woodland Ridge won a good race last time out, but he's got a small penalty for that. But carrying 60, I don't think he can give the weight to the filly. And um, then also a horse like um, Rosa Rosa. I know Alan thinks a bit of this filly, and uh, she had a, a weak post maiden, so hopefully she can improve on that. And then at the bottom of the weights, Ming Shi given an ordinary ride last time out, let bowl to the front and stopped. So for that better ride, that can be in the money. But I'm actually quite strong on St. Clude. I think she'll, she'll win it and she'll beat Alice Island. These uh, oh. big six, I've gone two, two, seven and nine. Two, seven and nine. But he does like the filly here uh, and I suspected that he will. Our good friend Grant, number seven, St. Clude in race number seven. And could that be a nice way to possibly catch this quartet if you go big and possibly bank her and try and find uh, a few other horses to include amongst grand selections? I think you'll get money here in race number seven. On to the eighth race where we'll close things off. And if things are going to plan, let's see how Mr. Grand Paddock ends things off. Merit rated 82 handicap. Number one, Sequoia. Uh, three to one, like the look of the form that he brings into the race. Horse number three, Dowza, on best form, he must have a serious chance. Number four, Central City, it's Khrif and Fori. Dare we leave them out of anything? Five, Jaspero, well, that's trading at seven to one. And uh, it's then double, no, we've got one more runner. Number 12, Magical Midlands at nine to two. And that's Muzi Yeni and Kelly Mitchley. Just to recap on that betting ground, number one at three to one, horse number three at six to one, four at nine to two, five is a seven to one shot. And then Yeni and Kelly on Magical Midlands. Uh, if you had to push me for a first choice, it may just be this horse, number 12, Magical Midlands at nine to two. But what you make of this field? Um, nice field for a last race. Normally it's a shocking field and we battle to find any uh, thing to do there and uh, difficult in the quartet. But I like this race. Not a very bad uh, bad race at all. I've gone for the five horse Jaspero as my value bet on the day. Um, put a line through his last run. Even though he, he didn't get beaten too far, he pulled the shoe in the race. Didn't quite see the 2,000 out. Um, he's deadly over a mile um, on the grass. He's got one draw, Kumala. He'll be out in front, there's no doubt about it. His dangers are definitely magical. Midlands, unfortunately, he's drawn out a bit deep at 11. Yeah, and he's going to have to commit, but he hasn't got a problem doing that on a racehorse. And then um, I think Alan was quite confident on this horse. Um, Central City running a big race. and. Dowser and Sequoia to, to fill it up. These I don't think it's over complicated. I've got five horses in the pick six, one, three, four, five, and twelve. And I've gone for the five as the value bet in the race. These Jaspera. Yeah, you know, so I was falling racing last week Friday and Fiery Duke won the last race. I think the favorite was Iron Tail, ran third in the money. There were horses like I think graduation time and Joyous Jubilee, they finished in the top four there and that quartet ended up paying 2,400 Rand and you know when you analyze that field, although it was competitive, that was a decent payout, 2,400 to close things off last week. When you, when you look at this field, can you see a quartet paying around that sum of money or even more, Grant? Probably around there. I'd, I'd, I'd definitely rove Magical Midlands and, and Jaspera and then play around those two horses in the race. I, I don't think it can pay much more than that, to be honest with you, because I think the winner, the, the, the four horses will hold their form. They have been holding their form, and I don't see why they shouldn't should uh, lose form now. So, yeah, it should probably pay around two and a half Ds. Ah, you've given us some food for thought because, you know, usually you get these highly competitive races to close things off, as Grant alluded to, but he's thinking that it could be, a, you know, like a form result here. But if you find the right Ruffy to finish in the top four, then that will definitely boost that dividend. He's roving banker's numbers, five and 12, a seven to one shot in Zespero and nine to two, number 12. Magical Midlands. So, Grant, let's go through your suggested bets and uh, it's up on screen now. 
Hundred percent. D is my best bet. Race two, number three, Sea of Tears. My value bet for the day, race eight, number five, Jaspero. And my suggested bet is the bipod goes as follows. We start off with two and six by banker three, by banker eight, by one and two, by two, three, four, seven and thirteen, by one, four, and nine for sixty rand. Well, that is uh, Grant paddox bipot and he's giving you a value bet and a best bet on the card and hopefully things go accordingly on this friday in kabeka at february as always grant thank you so much for your valuable time thank you very much these and good luck to those punters tomorrow bye thanks to grant paddock to you the valued racing fan well i trust you that you're gonna have a wonderful day playing at Fairview on Friday. Have a blast, find all the winners, make a huge profit, and until we meet again, you take care. Salani